Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and I'm sporting my cute, ugly Christmas sweater. I don't know if you've ever heard of the ugly Christmas sweater parties, but it's kind of been a thing the last couple of years where people will have parties and they'll have a big contest of who can wear the ugliest Christmas sweater. And they even make ugly Christmas sweaters in stores for this very purpose. But those novelty sweaters are things you're maybe going to wear once, they're scratchy, uncomfortable, really hideous, and they probably just get tossed away at the end of the season. And I don't like that. So what we're going to do today is find a comfy, cozy sweatshirt that's not very expensive. You're going to paint it up the way we want it. So we'll wear it more than once and we can still make it super gaudy and, you know, over the top for Christmas. And the chances are you're going to wear it more than once or twice. And it's going to be completely unique. You're not going to have anybody else with the same sweater just like you. And it's going to be a lot of fun. A really great project you can do with your whole family or any of your friends. So today we're going to use some fabric paint and we have a sponsor for this video. It's Conda, the maker of the Kitty Color line of products and we're going to use their set of 40 assorted fabric paints. This set has some metallics, some glow in the dark that really does glow and some glitter colors and some foam colors which is how I did the puffy eyes on my Grinch here. Um, I'm going to share some tips for using this, how to stretch your supplies if you need a, like, a larger amount of one color and um, I'm also going to give you a tips for working on dark to light fabric because some colors are more transparent and will work better on lighter fabrics. So I'm going to link everything down below Below that you're going to need for this project. You can probably even scrounge around in your closet and find an old sweatshirt that you can alter and we're going to have a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's go to the table and let's paint an ugly Christmas sweater or a cute one. Before you begin working on your fabric, you really want to plan it out. What do they say? Uh, failure to plan is planning to fail. And that is definitely true when it comes to fabric crafting, because if you make an error on your material with the fabric paint, you kind of have to work it into your design. So you don't want to, um, to mess up there. I decided to use a variety of colored markers, and these are a dual brush tip pen also by Conda. They're really nice quality. And uh, if you're a paper crafter, scrapbooker, or you like to draw def or work in like uh, adult coloring books, I definitely would recommend this set. It's not very expensive and you get a hundred different colors. But I thought it'd be great for planning out my idea here because I'd be able to get definitely every color that I would have a tube of paint for. So I decided to start off by just sketching on a simple sweatshirt shape using gray. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to use for a sweatshirt color to begin with, so I thought if I started with something neutral then I could color in that background and uh, figure out what I wanted to purchase as far as a sweatshirt because I didn't have any plain sweatshirts to, uh, to alter. The first design I came up with, I thought, well, let's do something simple like Rudolph. Now, you can obviously draw this right out with your fabric paint right on any color sweatshirt you like, or if you are concerned with how long it's going to take a lot of paint to dry, like the, in the antlers on the nose, any large area like that, you can always cut that out of craft felt and glue it on with fabric, washable fabric glue, the kind that's um, that's designed to be able to be washed, not washed out, that kind, like a, like a gem tack or fabric tack type of glue and that will conserve your paint and also dry a lot quicker than um, than a thick application of paint. So after that I thought another great idea that you could do on a white sweatshirt would be a snowman and the great thing about working on a light colored fabric is the fabric paint shows up really well with one coat and if you're going to use like those glow in the dark colors or the glitter colors I would highly recommend using a light colored fabric. For the design I ended up going with, I decided I would take a page from my favorite Christmas book, which would be uh, The Grinch, obviously, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and um, I decided to kind of put those iconic uh, yellow eyes from the 1960s cartoon and Dr. Seuss book and just put a big old Grinch face on the sweatshirt. As I um, started to get my details drawn in, I started to think about what colors I was going to want to use. I knew I wanted a bright neon green for the face, and then I thought about the background. I thought it would be cool to have Christmas bulbs or some sort of thing that would give me like a pattern in the background, and then I thought I really wanted to work on a black um, shirt. I thought that would give me the nice, a nice contrast with the neon face, and uh, that's ultimately what I decided to go with. Uh, the paints here, You'll see you get 40 colors, and the tubes are, I'd say, about an ounce. They're very easy to squeeze, so it's going to be really good if you've got arthritis and you've had problems in the past. You're not going to have issues with these. It's very easy to squeeze. You'll see that some of these colors are glow-in-the-dark, some are metallic, and some are glitter. The glow-in-the-dark really does glow in the dark, but you'd want to apply that on top after you've got your other colors down because they're not going to be as opaque as your other colors. So if you want the glow-in-the-dark effect, 
paint it with regular colors first, let it dry, and then go on top with the glow in the dark effect. And you will be able to get that, which I think would be so fun for like, um, if kids were making Christmas pajamas, because um, I know when my kids were little, they would all like to spend the night together in one of the bedrooms on Christmas Eve. And so I think just think that'd be fun, you know, if their pajamas were glowing, that would just be really cute. I started off, and I apologize for the lighting here, it just kind of like my camera went crazy seeing that black sweatshirt and the uh, the shiny fabric paint. Um, I started off just by sketching in the design with the tubes of paint, and um, I went with the eyes first because I knew if I centered them, then I'd be able to get the face in. And I decided to make the face smaller than what I did in my original sketch because um, when I was looking at that sweatshirt, I was like, that's going to be so much paint. I was afraid I was going to run out. And um, at that point, I didn't have uh, the right color felt to do like an applique. So I thought I would just um, take a few different shades of green and put them down together. And that way I could extend my green. So there's a tip if you need a lot of, of one color that you don't have, take those five shades of green or take some yellow, blue, and some green, mix them together, and then you can um, spread that color around with the paintbrush. I use the paintbrush to try to get the texture of the fur, so I did want to leave some of those textured lines. I'm using a combination of like the foam paint and the metallic paint, because if you're working on a dark fabric like this, your metallic paint is going to be the most opaque. I would really urge you to go with a light colored material because I did have to go and put another coat on top of my paint after it dried. So that did add some significant time to my project here. And if you're working with children, that might be frustrating. Or if you've got like a party the next day you're trying to go to, that's gonna be super frustrating because your shirt's not gonna be ready to wear. Something else I realized with the foam paint, which I'm using here on the um, the kind of uh, Santa Claus or like fluff is that um, it will dry kind of to a foamy matte finish if you just let it dry on its own. But if you apply some heat with a heat tool, or I guess you could hover an iron over it, just be careful not to touch the fabric, you will get a much better puff to your paint. So, um, and this is something I kind of learned accidentally because I had put so much of the yellow foam paint on the eyes and it was taking forever to dry. So I'm like, oh, I want I got to finish this up. So I took my heat tool and I heated it up because I don't have a hair dryer and um, and it puffed and it gave me this really cool like uh, like the old liquid applique stuff. It gave me this really cool texture. So um, luckily it worked for the eyes. I was I was OK with it. Um, but Definitely you want to be aware of that because if you don't want that fluffy puffy texture, do not use a hair dryer to speed your paint. Actually, you really shouldn't anyway with an acrylic um, paint because it does tend to want to make it blister. But if you've got the foam paints and you want that special effect, use some heat. In fact, I think I'm going to try some of that foam paint with some paper crafting and use the heat to get that puffiness because I think that would be really cute on like a if you stamped a teddy bear or something, or you just wanted something really textured to be able to heat up that the foam paint. So I think I'll be using the fabric paint more as a uh, paper crafting supply than a fabric supply, um, personally. Now, the you can see this is about as fine as you can get with these applicators. So I just want to let you know they're a little bit uh, thicker than, um, I think it was the Tulip Puffy paint that you can get at the craft store, which is harder to squeeze. Um, so I think that's why it's a little easier to squeeze is because the nozzle is a little bit bigger. So what you might want to do if you want a super fine line is to actually squeeze it out onto a palette and I'll use a liner brush to get those really fine lines. Um, I think it's fine on fabric because you really want the stuff to stand out. So um, I, you know, it worked. It, you're looking up real close up at it like you are right now. It might look a little, um, Oh, I don't know, a little bit gaudy, but it's an ugly Christmas sweater, so I think it's it's totally fine. And I decided to do the uh, the white in kind of a loopy puffiness like the old cartoon head, and uh, I was really happy with the way it came out. And you'll be able to see me wearing it here in a minute. I'm going to link all the supplies that I use down below, so check that out if you want to buy any of these things, and good luck with your ugly Christmas sweater project. Happy crafting!